Hello friends, welcome to Instrumentation for You channel. Friends, there are many different types of technologies are available to measure the tank level and they all work on different principles. Using some of these technologies, I have tried to explain how to measure the tank level. So, if you want to watch all these videos, then the link of all these videos are given in the description. So, after watching these videos, you must watch those videos also. Friends, in today's video, we will learn one more level measurement method, ultrasonic type level measurement method. In today's video, we will see the basic information of ultrasonic waves and ultrasonic type level measurement. Then we will see the basic structure of ultrasonic level transmitter. After this, we will see the working principle of ultrasonic level measuring instrument. Then what should we have to take care during the level measurement using the ultrasonic level sensor. And at the end of the video, we will see what are the advantages and limitations of the ultrasonic type level measurement. Friends, till now you have not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can see my upcoming videos first. So let's first we see some basic information about the ultrasonic waves and ultrasonic type level measurement. An ultrasonic type level measurement system is mainly used for continuous level measurement of a tank or vessel. An ultrasonic level measuring instrument measures the distance from the transmitter to the surface of the process material. The ultrasonic level transmitter has no moving parts and it measures the level without making physical contact with the product. Due to one of these characteristics of the transmitter, it is more suitable for measuring the level of the tank those containing corrosive, boiling or hazardous chemical. In radar type level measurement technique, radio waves are used to find out the level of the tank or vessel. Similarly, in ultrasonic level measurement technique, ultrasonic waves are used to find out the level of the product in the tank, silo or vessel. This means that in ultrasonic level measurement, the waves sent by the instrument are ultrasonic waves. Sonic is a sound that we can hear, but ultrasonic is the sound above our hearing range. We can listen up to the maximum frequency of 20 kHz and ultrasonic frequency is above 20 kHz. To measure the level of the product in the tank, the sensor of the ultrasonic level transmitter is emits the high frequency ultrasonic pulse, usually in the range of 20 kHz to 200 kHz. Lower frequency instruments with higher amplitudes are used for more difficult level measuring applications. For example, long distance or solid level measurement are used. And higher frequency instruments are used for shorter liquid level measurement. Using the speed of sound, the ultrasonic level measuring instruments work on time of flight measuring principle. So before understanding the working principle of ultrasonic level measurement, let us first look at the basic structure or construction of the ultrasonic level transmitter. So, with the help of the block diagram, let us now understand the basic physical structure of the ultrasonic level transmitter. There are four main parts available in the electronics module of the transmitter. First, ultrasonic sensor. Second, control circuit. Third, transmission circuit. And fourth one is timing generator circuit and counter. So, let's understand in short description. What these four parts do in the level transmitter? Ultrasonic level sensor will translate electrical energy into ultrasonic waves. For the signal conversion process, the most common kind of ultrasonic sensor consists of piezoelectric crystal. When electrical energy is applied to a piezoelectric crystal, this piezoelectric crystal will expand or contract. If the electrical energy that is applied to the piezoelectric crystal is an alternating at an ultrasonic frequency, then the piezoelectric crystal also expands or contracts at the same frequency. Then the crystal vibrates and this vibration of the crystal are transferred to the plate and this produces the ultrasonic sound, means waves. So in this way, the electrical energy is converted into ultrasonic waves and this type of reverse actions also happens, which means that these piezoelectric crystals also generate electrical signal when the ultrasound is received. The second section belongs to control circuit. 
A microcontroller based control circuits monitor and control all movements and all the activities of the ultrasonic level transmitter. The third section is related to the timing generator circuit. The timing generator circuit that is used to synchronize all the functions in ultrasonic level transmitters. And the next section deals with the pulse transmission circuit. Here we use two pulse transmission circuit. One for the transmission pulse and the other for the receiver pulse. The transmission parts converts the electrical energy into ultrasonic pulses and transmits it to the surface of the product. As the ultrasonic pulses hit the surface, it is reflected back toward the receiver sensor in the form of eco pulses. And the receiver parts receives these pulses and converts these eco pulses into electrical energy. And the time delay between the signal transmission and the reception of the echo is measured by the control circuit using the counter. And this time delay is proportional to the level of the product. If the time delay is short, then the level is high. And if the time delay is high, the level of the tank is low. The level is finally converted to 4 to 20 milliampere signal. 4 milliampere signal is indicates 0% level. And 20 milliampere signal is indicates 100% level. Means this 4 to 20 milliampere output signal carrying the level data. And it can be transmitted to a long distance to process control devices either DCS or PLC. Friends, after understanding the structure of ultrasonic level transmitter, let us understand the working principle of ultrasonic level transmitter. In ultrasonic type level measurement, the measuring instrument means transmitter is mounted at the top of the tank or vessel. And the ultrasonic sensor sends ultrasonic high frequency pulses toward the product surface. As the ultrasonic pulses hit the product surface, these pulses are reflected from the product surface in the form of echo. And this echo is moved toward the sensor. And as the sensor receives the echo, which is developed by the product surface, the echo is converted into electrical energy for onward processing by the control circuit. As the control circuit collects the signal in the form of electrical energy, the time delay taken for the transmission and reflection is calculated. This means that the instrument calculates the travel time of the pulses that return to the sensor and it is called time of flight. This time delay determines the level inside the tank. Friends, this is the working principle of ultrasonic level measurement instrument. As I mentioned further that, as the control circuit receives the reflected echo pulses, it calculates the time of flight of pulse and gives the level indication. So let's see how this calculation is done. Consider that we have to measure the continuous level of a cylindrical shaped tank. For this, ultrasonic level transmitter is installed on the top of the tank. And here, F is the absolute distance, the distance in which the level is to be measured. And here, the downside is 0% level and the top side is 100% level. E is the total empty distance between the mounting flange of the sensor and the lowest measurable level of the span means 0% level. L is the part filled with the product. D is the empty part of the tank. And BD is the blocking distance. In most ultrasonic level transmitters, the distance between the mounting flange to the maximum level 100% of the product is called a blocking distance. The measurement is not reliable inside the blocking distance. Therefore, the level of the product should not be allowed to rise within the blocking distance. The ultrasonic level transmitter measures the time delay between the transmitted signal and received echo signal. Ultrasonic waves travels at the speed of sound, so it is easy to calculate the distance from the sensor to the product surface using the equation. Distance D, that is the distance between the sensor and the product surface, that distance D is equal to speed of sound multiplied by the time taken by the ultrasonic pulses to be transmitted and received from the sensor to the surface of the product, means the time of flight divided by the 2. 
We are dividing this equation by 2 because the level measuring pulse is travel from the sensor to the surface of the product and from the surface of the product to the sensor which means that the level measuring pulse is travel double distance of the measurement. That's why here we divided this equation by 2. If the total distance between the mounting flange of the sensor and 0% of the level means the total empty distance E of the tank is programmed in the transmitter then the level L inside the tank can be easily calculated because level L is equal to total empty distance E minus distance D as measured by the transmitter. This principle of level measurement seems straightforward and true only in theory but when practically we measure the level then there are some technical difficulties which we have to take care of to do the correct level measurement. This means that in practical applications of ultrasonic level measurement we need to consider several factors. Here we will look at some of the major factors. First, the air medium through which the ultrasonic waves travel. If the temperature of the air medium changes, then the speed of the sound also changes. As the air temperature increases, the speed of the sound also increases equally. The transmitter may have an integrated temperature sensor, which can help us to compensate for the changes in the temperature of, of the air which will change the speed of sound in the calculation and hence give us an accurate level measurement by calculating the distance. Also, the air medium between the ultrasonic level sensor and the product surface must be at same temperature to give an accurate data. Next, in vacuum application, level measurement is not possible with an ultrasonic level transmitter. Ultrasonic waves cannot travel through empty space. They need medium like gas, liquid or solid to travel and take measurement. Next, the product whose level we want to measure with the ultrasonic level transmitter must have a certain density. To reflect the ultrasonic waves, sound travel faster in air than solid and liquids. So, if there is a significant difference in density between the air and the product, we can get a good reflected signal as a result. Next. It becomes more difficult to measure the level of the liquid with a heavy layer of foam or with a heavy layer of bubbles because the foam can attenuate the signal either completely or partially. If the foam completely attenuates the signal, there will be no echo return and a weak echo signal can be generated from somewhere in the foam layer rather than the liquid surface below the foam. Next, mount the sensor in such a way that the face of the sensor is exactly 90 degree to the surface of the product. If we do not do this, the reflected echo will either be missed entirely by the sensor or this sensor will use reflected echo that is reflected from the vessel wall or vessel internal structure instead of the actual level. Next, obstruction in the tank can cause multiple and false reflection. But nowadays, signal processing helps to ignore these problems. This issue can be eliminated up to a certain limit. The transmitter is designed to listen to the echo of the return pulse with the highest amplitude and to mass out the all other ultrasonic signal in the vessel. Next, the profile of liquid surface is an important point to consider. If the surface of the liquid has high turbulence, then the reading of the liquid level is fluctuating. Next, in ultrasonic level measurements, the measurement is affected due to the presence of vapor or steam above the measuring surface because vapor interrupts the transmission and reflection of the ultrasonic signal. So, let us now move on to the advantages and limitation of ultrasonic type level measuring instrument. So, first let us look at some advantages of ultrasonic type level measurement. Advantages First, the ultrasonic level transmitter measures the level without making physical contact with the product. Second, ultrasonic transmitter is cheaper as compared to radar transmitter. And the ultrasonic transmitter is also easy to install. There is no difference in the accuracy of the level reading. Even after changes, 
in their chemical composition or changes in the dielectric constants of the process fluid material. Ultrasonic level measurements works well in the storage tanks of corrosive substances such as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and caustic soda. However, here one has to ensure that the sensor material must be chemical compatible. Now we will see limitations. With a heavy layer of foam or a heavy layer of bubbles, it becomes more difficult to measure the level of the liquid. Next, ultrasonic level measurement system cannot be used for liquids that form heavy vapor, vapor or vapor layers. Next, the level measurement system cannot be used for sound absorbing materials. For level measurement, the transmitter transmits a signal toward the surface of the product and these signals are reflected from the surface. But some liquid mediums absorb the signals instead of the reflected heat. Next, ultrasonic level measurement system is not suitable for high pressure and vacuum services. Next, many factors affect the transmission signal and the returns echo signal. These factors such as change of temperature in the air medium, layer of foam or bubbles, excessive turbulence of the liquid surface. This all creates problem in measuring the level of the correct liquid.